Hey, Tony Gaston here popping in. You know, I got a question. Um, I, I can't remember if this was in the comments or, or email. Not not a talks with Tony. And I couldn't remember if I ever did a video on this. But the question was, why do what does it mean when a man only wants to be your best friend? And, you know, for the short and simple, if you got to go, it means you're not his wife. That's that's the first the one thing you need to know is that he does not see you as his wife. And then from there, it, it could be one of anything. And so it's so many reasons why a man would do that. But if, if all you need to, if you looking for a husband and you are wondering if this man is your husband, if he puts you into the friend zone, then the answer is no. Now, one out of, a hundred thousand will turn into a marriage you know and typically they are in my office a year to three years in going through a divorce because they started out as friends and the language of friends is totally different than the language of intimate partners you can be intimate partners and have a friendship, but the mindset is totally different. When you're friends, it should be like siblings. It should be, there's no intimacy, there's nothing there, there's no possibility of it, no chance of it. You know, unless you live in a certain area where siblings, you know, get together. But other than that, there's no chance of that when it's true friendship. There's no desires there. Now, what happens a lot of times is when a man makes a woman just a friend, it eventually turns into friends with benefits. And there are no benefits to being friends with benefits. Because now what you're doing is you're developing feelings for somebody that does not want you. And so now you have this emotional tie to them your brain is now craving and desiring the releases it gets when you're you know, doing whatever you're doing with them that is outside of the boundaries of friendship, platonic friendship, but yet this man does not want you. And oftentimes it happens the other way around too. A woman will put a man in the friend zone for the very same reason. And then after getting her heart broke by all the men she thought she wanted, then she starts looking at her friend and saying, hey, is there something here? Is there a possibility here? Could this turn into something? And again, one out of 100,000, it, it'll turn into something. And out of that one, probably 10% of them last a lifetime. And so, but you'll meet people who say, yeah, we were just best friends. We were platonic friends. Nothing was going on. Five years later, three years later, seven years later, we decided to give it a try. We started dating. We got married. 20 years later, we happy. But that is not the norm. That is not common. That does not happen. It's so many times I'm on the phone coaching a couple who were quote unquote friends first and then got into a relationship. And so here's the thing. What you have to understand about men is that there's there's energy there's this you know this this energy this feeling so the the chemistry the chemical release from a man talking to a woman so that feminine aura that feminine demeanor that is refreshing for a man it is replenishing for a man so what happens is the brain enjoys different stimuli so it's you get a different feeling you get the same feeling but in a different way it's, it's it's hitting the same type of receptors when you have your favorite dessert and then when you have your favorite entree when you have your favorite drink you're getting that same release but it's different taste different texture you love them the same but yet differently at the same time that's how a man's mind is when it comes to women and when it comes to interaction with women. So one woman may hit this certain receptor to where 
It's like, this the thug misses, you know, this the woman, she could throw hands. And so she got a certain vibe and energy. This the woman over here, she miss Pris, you know, and she got a certain vibe and energy. This woman over here, she, the athlete, she got a certain vibe and energy. This woman over here, she actually like women, but she got a certain vibe and energy. And so each woman gives the man a different type of fix, a different type of feeling. And so a man can choose one woman to be his wife and then some men will choose one woman to be uh, or women to be his mistress some women to be uh, friends with benefits some women to be just friends and then some women who are just associates or colleagues hey and bye what's for work today what what's what we studying in class today things like that and each person, each woman is doing something different in his mind. He's getting a different feeling from each one. So he thinks. And so when, what you have to realize, if a man puts you in just a friend role and you as a woman want more than that, you got to run. You got to run because that's the most dangerous space to be in. Because the reason why that's so dangerous is if you are a woman and you're desiring love and you want to be a wife and you're dealing with this man and you see him as husband material, husband potential, but he is treating you just like a best friend or like a fr friend, not even a best friend, either one, either way he's treating you, that's all he's going to give you when you are dealing with him and you're talking to him as a woman you start to fall in love and you start you fall in friendship love but there's also an underlying feeling of romantic love and every now and then in your dreams you may be kissing him in your dream you may sleep with him in your dream. Y'all may be on a long walk on the beach in your dream. Every now and then your mind will enter this space of what if. And so what happens now is because a woman brain is slightly different from a man's when it comes to relationships. And, and it may not be the brain. It may be social conditioning. So men have always been told be fruitful, replenish the earth. And if you start at the beginning of time, unless there was just, boom, we don't know it to be 10,000 men, 10,000 women dropped on earth at the same time. So when you go all the way back to the beginning of the human existence, the man holding that reproductive chemical in him, that reproductive substance in him had to go and deposit that into multiple women because if he just going to, to one woman, it's only so much she's going to be able to do. And then so now these men were going to daughter, sister, niece in the beginning. And so from there, you go into this society where and it's different religions where men had multiple wives. Then you go to different areas and regions and where kings had a thousand wives 300 more concubines on top of having a thousand wives one or two or three or four different women that he's lying with every day she goes back to the to the quarters that she has to remain at she can be killed if she comes read the book of esther in the bible she can be killed if she enters the king's quarters without being summoned without being called she can lose her life. So there was this type of thing spreading around the world. Even today, there are religions where a man can have multiple wives. There are certain little encla enclaves and subcultures, you know, the sister wives thing. And so this could also be not just, not biological, because to be honest with you, my wife is enough for me. As I really think about this, I'm like, biologically, Biologically, my mind cannot deal with two, three, four wives. That's too much energy. 
that too much mood swings that too much going on oh like got to be trying to read minds and trying to see do you want something to eat uh i don't know you don't know if you're hungry well yeah i'm kind of hungry i'm feeling something but so what you want to eat well i'm not sure okay you want this no i'm not feeling that you want this no don't want that you want this no don't want now can you imagine it's already off just this one conversation with one woman the brain is tired so it's actually not biological that a man is meant to be with multiple wives now he may have a fleeting desire to be intimate with multiple women but that's why there is such a thing as self-control that's why there's such a thing as discipline that's why there's such a thing as the mind the brain so that you can talk to yourself and correct yourself so now when you look at this society has conditioned men to have multiple and to be okay with multiple and has conditioned women to expect men to cheat and to expect men to look and to lust and to expect men to flirt and it has been normalized but so so what's happening is now men still being under a different law so you know under the main law of america and in certain other countries too a man can have one wife certain religious beliefs now a man can have multiple wives but he can't equally treat all them wives the same because you can't give three four wives the same amount of time three out of 365 days a year and he's not going every day and giving this one two hours this one two hours this one two hours every single day and if he is they're getting a shell of him they're not getting all of his energy it just it's not humanly possible so somebody getting the bulk of his attention and they got favor like Esther had with the king in the Bible. And then somebody else getting his sloppy second, somebody else getting the crumbs from his table. But if that's their religion and that's their culture, then they're going to condition themselves to be happy with that. And to say that they happy, to say that they pleased, to say that they okay with it. I don't seen a woman in the comments that said she one of multiple wives. I said, y'all allowed to watch YouTube? I, what the real? What did you all here do? This is about monogamous relationships. So stuff. What you all into over there? You must want to escape. Go on, tell the truth. Don't be in my comments talking about you lying, talking about you happy, and you on my video because my video is not talking to that. What you dealing with? So you over here for something else? What? What you? Ask, what these questions got to do with you? Nah. Come on now. Tell the truth. You know you want you one man to yourself. Tell the truth. Stop lying. You want one man to yourself that you could be with all day and every single night. You know you don't want to be sharing that man with no two, three other women. Stop telling that lie. Come on now. I'm human too. I wouldn't want to share my wife with two, three other men. That ain't human nature. Human, we selfish as it is. We selfish as it is. You ain't nowhere in the world. Oh, yes. Come on. Oh, you just pulled that out of Rebecca? Ooh, come put that in me. Oh, we're done. Are you going to go put it in Leah now? Okay, go right ahead. You know what? You know what? Leah deserves some of that pole. Go put some of that pole in Leah. She deserves it. Ain't nowhere in the world these women out here happy with this situation. But society has brainwashed them and conditioned them to pretend that they okay with this polyamory and this polygamy and this all this right here. They, they have been conditioned to believe that that's all you are worth. And that's all you deserve. And that's all that exists for you. And that this is life and this is the way of life and this is the way it goes. And you can't have one man to yourself that will only lust after you and desire you and be. That is fiction. That's not the truth. Guess what? That's a lie from the pit. A 
of where the devil live. Because my wife, my only woman, my wife, my only woman, and I know it's relationship coaches out here that's out here dealing with more than they wife. Guess what? That ain't every woman's story. That ain't every woman's story. It's a lot of women who they husband is for them only. So if that's the desire of your heart to have a husband, stop settling for being his friend. Stop settling for being his concubine. Stop settling for being his Monday, Wednesday, Friday woman. Stop settling for being his morning woman or his night woman or his afternoon woman. Stop settling if you want a whole man to yourself. If you got any interest in this man and he have no interest in being your husband, cut him off and move on with your life. I forgot to tell you what I was going to tell you. Now, see, what happens is when you're dealing with a man and you as a woman want to be married, you desire to be married. When you're dealing with a man as your friend, what happens is he takes up the male masculine energy in your life. He consumes all of your feminine energy that you have to give to a man. So you compartmentalize him as your man, as even though he's just a friend, quote unquote friend, he actually is filling the space of he is filling the space he's completing or meeting the need for masculine energy in your life so where your body is craving the scent of a man the voice of a man the security of a man where your mind is craving that this man who is your friend actually fulfills that need so what happens is now you subconsciously ignore every other man. And if you don't ignore them, you subconsciously push them away. Unconsciously, you push them away. And the man, the other men that meet you can tell that you are not emotionally available. He can tell that you are kind of like a shell of yourself as a woman that the space for a man he can tell that that space is full even though you're not getting a romantic committed love from your situationship or your friend with benefits or your male friend that you secretly have feelings for and he knows you have feelings for him but because he does not want you he uses you as his escape he uses you as his alternative energy his alternative conversation so when he wants to hear a different tone of voice than his wife or his girlfriend or the main woman he wants he calls you when he wants to hear a different laugh a different opinion a different aura and demeanor and energy he comes to you and now you take and you give him a you give him variety. So now with this variety, he feels diverse. He feels complete because it's kind of like with men, if, we, if we're able, we'll have multiple of the same thing because everything serves a different purpose. Like this watch I have on right now, it has the rubber band. So I got on a black shirt and it has a black face. Well, sometimes you'll see me with my watch where it's all gold. That all gold is if I got on like a polo or a nicer outfit and I'm, I'm dressing up, I put that all gold on. When I'm dressed down and I got on this here black and I got on these camo shorts, now I put on this here watch with the, with the rubber band. You see what I'm saying? Now, this right here is a Audemars. Piguet, that's how you pronounce it now. You know, black folk, we pronounce Piguet. Audemars Piguet. Hey, that's an Audemars Piguet. Piguet. Yeah. I Googled it, it said Piguet. I was like, wow, would have never saw that because I spelled Piguet, P-E-E-G-A-Y. Y'all spell it P-I-Q. My hand on top of it right now, so I can't see how it's spelled because the time on right on top of it. 
P I Q U E T. I'm like, hmm? but it's from another country. Now the other watch, the gold watch, is a Rolex. Now that right there, Rolex, we know of that. But guess what? Both of them cost, and my wife look out for me, and they two different brands. So it's like, well, if why you not just a Rolex man? Guess what? I got a I got a Movado watch and i got g-shock the little all rubber kind of sport g-shock watch you see what i'm saying well why you not see if you able to you will get different things just human nature you like well okay even women you like well this pair of shoes is for this so this is a a, a four inch heel this is a six inch heel oh this is a this a a red bottom oh this a a white bottom this right here black bottom this right here is espadrilles. This right here open toe. This right here closed toe. Everything serve a different purpose. And so that's how these men, some men juggle women. Some men say, okay, you the BMW woman. You the Mercedes woman. You the Toyota woman. You the Lexus woman. You see what I'm saying? Oh, you the head monster. You the top monster, the bottom monster. You the left monster. You the right monster. You know you 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 good at cooking. You good at uh -huh. you good at this. You good at that. And so, if he does not have a moral compass, he will treat women the same way we do cars, the same way we do watches, the same way we do draws. He will treat women just like that. And, and a woman, see, the, the issue with a lot of women is a lot of women so desperate for love that a lot of women just try to get in where they could fit in. Oh, I'm just a friend right now. Okay, I'm going to play that role. You know, I'm going to be the best friend ever. Okay, let me cook every Wednesday for him. Cook his favorite meal every Wednesday. Oh, you know what? It's his birthday. I'm finna just shower him with some great gifts. No, sister, you are the friend, okay? You need to be getting a gift card for $25. That's it. That's it. You a friend. You not his girlfriend. You not his wife. You need to understand what friend mean. You're not supposed to be cooking for him, picking up his kids, babysitting his kid, doing his dry cleaning, Washing his clothes, folding his clothes, cooking his food. You not every now and then on your bike. Every now and then he grabbing your boot. Every now and then he squeezing your head like you're not supposed to be doing all that as no friend. You see what I'm saying? But it's so many women that are so desperate for love, they feel like this is the rite of passage. Like, okay, I gotta be his okay, I gotta be like his distant secret friend first. Okay, and then I'm going to get elevated to like his public friend. Okay, then I'm going to be like his best friend. Then I'm going to be his best friend with benefits. Then I'm going to get to be his fiance. No, his girlfriend. Then I'm going to get to be the on and off again girlfriend. Then we get to have a situation shell. Then I get to be his girlfriend again. Then I get to be his fiance for five years. Then, then we get married. And so it's so many women that's putting themselves through these little ringers of a grown boy. And you're going through and you just trying to, you just like you on a video game trying to get to the next level. All right, let me do this, let me do this, let me do this, no. If a man wants you, he know you. He know from the very first time he look at you. You can have your mask on and he can look at your eyes, your lashes, your eyebrows, and your hairdo and know if he wants you. He Just like that. The, the eyes, the window to the soul. He can look you in your eyes and know if you could be his wife. Point blank period. Point blank. Ain't telling no lie. Ain't telling no lie. Men have that gift. Now, he going to dumb it down and tell you, ah, oh, that ain't true. That ain't true. It's going to take me at least seven years to get to know somebody. He lying. He don't want to be married. He don't want to marry you. 
He just want to keep you and just use you. And then when he find a woman that's for him, he finna drop you like a bad habit. You he finna drop you. You finna hit that ground so hard you don't know what what you to hit, and you don't know what hit you. You like what the what well, he all of a sudden disappeared. How he just gonna cut me off and now I look on Facebook and he married. What the world? Because he knew all along what he was looking for and what he wanted. He didn't want you. That's what you got to understand. Because see, listen. While you giving this man your good energy, you blocking off, you blocking another man. You blocking your blessing. While you giving your heart and your time and your good conversation and your good advice to this man that do not want you, but you want you a husband. You giving all of you the femininity, all your aura and essence, you giving it to the, to the man that don't want you. He using you. You just a little supply. He just, you just some just a little extra. You see what I'm saying? You just some a little extra. You a little chaser. You see what I mean? And so he using you and then not a man that's for you that want you. You could look at him and even recognize that he handsome. That he well spoken, he put together, he driven, he ambitious. You could see all of that, and you'll be like, "Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a nice looking man." I, you know, I probably ought to hook him up with Keisha, cause Keisha's single and looking for somebody. He probably be a good fit for her. And you don't even realize that you're doing this subconscious because you think your friend, your husband, you think this man that you've been in this situation with and this friend with benefits with. You think y'all going somewhere. No, y'all not going nowhere. Y'all not going nowhere. Y'all is on a dead end road. You, you finna end up in a ditch. That's all. Listen to me. Because a man who want a wife, he bought that. You hear me? He own it. You finna know. And even if you building on friendship, this what you this this the part right here you got to get now. Oh, so you saying you can't you should not be friends before you date? I think I thought friendship you should be friends first. No, you friends, but you already know from jump that there is a romantic interest. When he says, Listen, I really like everything about you. And I really want to take this to the next level. So I would love if we could start to build. What that means is we finna build a friendship. But I'm letting you know at the gate what I'm on, what this here thing is about. You hear me? And a man come in, well, I'm not really ready for a relationship. I just, I really not really, you know, my mindset. I'm, I'm focused on my career. I'm focused on getting a house. I'm focused on paying off student loan debt. And it's like a relationship is just like the last thing on my mind. But I do like, like you as a person. And I just love your vibe, your energy. And I just want to get to know you better. And I just feel like we could just be really dope friends and just like, just, just see where it goes. Like if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know what? Well, at this stage of my life, I'm not really looking for any male friends right now. Um, so, you know, it was great knowing you and uh, thank you for the hat and everything, but uh, it was great knowing you. You know, I'm pretty sure it's other women looking for male friends. I don't need any male friends right now. I'm I'm dating intentionally right now. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll see you later. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You got you cannot let no man tell you he's not ready for no relationship and y'all could just be friends if you want you a husband. Go on about your business. Because guess what? If he tell you y'all could just be friends, but you want you a husband, when you meet the other man and you talk to him because you just friends with this man, when you talk to the other man who could be your husband and you mention and your friend call you, oh this oh this oh this my friend Brian, give me one second. Hey B, what's going on? Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm a little tied up just with my friend. Uh huh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Okay, all right, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, okay, I'm, all right, we'll talk in a little bit. I, I'll give you a call when I get in the car. All right, bye. So now you still with your little friend that deep down, you got a little something there that you feeling for him. He don't want you, though. But now over here, Tom, 
sitting right here at the date with y'all out hanging out. Y'all, you think you just been, you putting Tom in the friend zone when this could be your husband. You the friend zone him, so now Tom sitting over there like, he all in the conversation. He like, oh, I'm calling the car. Oh, okay. He heard you say you finna call him in the car. So I'm like, so when you hang, oh, okay. Oh, that's your friend? Oh, that's your friend? So I'm trying to act like he ain't, you know, jealous or insecure or nothing. He ain't jealous or insecure. He just trying to get a little intel. Oh, that was your friend? Okay. Oh, okay. The voice kind of sounded kind of deep. Like, she had a deep voice. Oh, oh, it was a guy. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. Oh, oh, that's why you said B. Oh, okay, okay, all right. So, oh, so, so what you, y'all grew up together? Oh, oh, you, oh, you just met him like six, oh, oh, okay. Oh, y'all been knowing each other for some little, little while? Oh, okay, okay. Now, so, now, now, one thing I always hear about, I always hear, like, women have, like, you know, you know, gay friend, like, you know, no, no offense to them guys or anything like that. I ain't like that. Like, I'm not no homepo. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, so, you know, that, that's a situation right there. Oh, no, no. Brian, no, he's not gay at all. He, uh, trust me, he 100% straight. Trust me. So, now, Tom, like, oh, 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 okay, oh, okay, that's cool, that's cool. Also, oh, y'all just kind of, you know, hang out, kick it, just talk on the phone and all that. Okay. Uh, check, please. Check, please. Oh, yeah, everything's good. Food was great. You know, I just I just seen you walking by, so I was just like, check, please. You know, that's all it was. Yeah, I was just, might as well get a check. Like, he keep walking by. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead now. So, so y'all just hanging out and just be kicking and all that. Okay, okay, yeah. So, like, you know, I mean, what's his situation? He got a girlfriend and everything. What? You, so now Tom trying to get in there. Tom like, okay, all right, all right. Well, hey, well, okay, thank you for the hit check. All right, okay. Uh, well, you know it was great talking to you. I'll give you a call. All right, so, so now, so now your husband that could have been your husband, you done ran your husband off. Now you done ran your husband off because you in the friend zone with this man that you low key got feelings for. But you lying to yourself about the feelings. And some and some women ain't lying to themselves about the feelings. Some women know they got feelings. But that man telling them, oh, it's not time yet. I'm focused on this. I'm focused on that. Oh, and, and then some of these men, some women sleeping with the man. But ain't got no title. Not exclusive. Or might be exclusive. Ain't got no title. And sleeping with the man. Just messing up all your energy. Just, just ruining your life. Just blocking all your blessings. Your husband walking past you every day and you emotionally unavailable to him because you with this man who won't give you no real commitment, who won't give you no, who won't ask you to be his woman, who won't be all in, who telling you he got to focus on this, focus on that. He he don't really want no relationship. He don't really like titles. Relationships kind of jinx everything and this and that. He's still healing. He trying to get to know God. He for all these excuses he come up with. When the only thing he should be saying is, I don't want you. I want a wife, but you ain't it. That's what he ought to be saying, but that's too hard to say. For 99.9% of men will never say that. Because uh, 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 contrary to popular belief, men actually don't like blatantly hurting women's feelings. But the stupid thing that we do is we don't consider that it actually hurts a woman more to lead her on than to just be straight up with her. So a man called himself sparing a woman feelings by not telling her, you're not my wife. I know you, I know you think you're cute and all that. I know you dress well. I know you take care of your body. You got a job. You got a nice Camry and all that. Ultima, whatever, you know, whatever. You're not my wife. And a man think that he's sparing her feelings by not being honest and straightforward with her, but then he don't he he leads her on and don't consider how much more damaging that will be. So if you're a man watching this, because your friend that you got in the friend zone sent this, you know gun well, you know gun well as a man that you're not finna be with no wife and have no women friends. And that and your wife be comfortable with it. So this woman you calling your friend, she sent you this video because she kind of got some feelings for you. Not a video ain't gonna get sent because she don't want the man. She don't want to admit that. Send the man a video. 
It's in the man video, so he know the game is exposed. Now you as a man, you know you dragging that woman along because you don't need you don't you don't even want her as no friend. She don't she don't know sports on the level as your homeboy. She don't know cars on the level of your homeboy. You supposed to be friends who got the same level of interest that you have. This woman here, that's not no friend. That's a a girlfriend without a title. That that's a concubine without without that title that you calling a friend. And you got this woman sitting still, stuck in her life, while you out here scanning the, the, the roaming the earth, scanning the world, looking for your number one woman, looking for you a woman, and got this woman here sitting still. She actually turning down men purposely and accidentally, waiting on your butt. And while you calling her a friend, while you out here sleeping with everything, and you living your life, instead of just telling this woman, like, listen, you know, I don't want to, I know men. And I know a man is not going to be with you and be okay with you being my best friend. Because I'm a man too. I'm a heterosexual man too. And I know that ain't going to fly. So in order to not block your blessings, I'm going to remove myself from your life. And we should just be, you know, colleagues like Merry Christmas, Happy Easter, Happy Hanukkah, Juneteenth, whatever we're going to celebrate. And we just shoot that message and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to let you be wide open and available for a man, you know, because I know how men are. A man is not going to be comfortable, especially with no man like me. You know what I'm saying? When he feel this swaggoo on ragu, he going to know that this ain't average. This ain't this. This ain't that. So, okay, listen. Yeah, uh, hey, listen, don't do all that crying and all that. And I, 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 listen, I know your mouth say that you don't care. If, if a man can't be okay with me being your friend that he's not the man for you, listen, that's not the case. That's not true. That's not true. Like, that's disrespectful to a man for you to ask him to be your man and him to trust that I don't have feelings or lusting after you or that I wouldn't touch you. Because listen, you not. Well, listen, you not. Hey, you, you hop on that bike now. I'm going to touch it now. You see what I'm saying? As a man... Men don't go on ahead and tell that truth. And men not going to get out the way. As, as humans, we're going to be selfish. It's just like a lot of women. Women the same way too now. A lot of women will have a male friend. This man will get a girlfriend. And, and, and the woman friend calling the man all time of night. Blowing the man phone up. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that the man got a situation. I remember having some clients. Some women clients who were like, you know, because they were celebrity or whatever. Knowing I'm married and would be calling me 11 o'clock at night, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. And it didn't dawn on me at first because I'm thinking like, ain't no way this person could like me. And then I talked to my wife about it. She said, Tony, yes. She said, it's men who lead a wife for a client or assistant or a, her, the, the wife's best friend, the wife classmate, the wife cousin. She said it happened every day. She so, so she said so a woman with no integrity, a woman who she immorally just she she just morally all over the place. And she was like, do you think she don't you think she'll lose sleep if she got you to liking her and she broke up our marriage? She was like, them type of women don't care nothing about that. So then I had to come out of that because I hadn't left the game, you know what I'm saying, really long time ago and so i'm just just deer in headlights being naive thinking oh i'm just out here helping people and people just they have all pure intentions and there's no way a woman would hire me for coaching with the desire to be with me what no way and so that's how i was i had to take the, the wool off my eye and my wife really put me on game and i remember this one woman told me and this woman said she was a virgin. So I'm like, if you're a virgin and you could easily go out here and sleep with somebody, but you saying you're a virgin, then you must got some kind of class or morals or something. And I remember that woman told me, she said, Tony, as women, we don't care that a man is taken. What that shows us is that he's willing to commit. Now we just need to get him to commit to us i was like <laughs> i slid out the chair 
I'm like, what? Now, of course, that ain't every woman, but she was speaking for a large amount of women. And the women who are not like that, the women who are not like that, those women can attest to there is a large section of women who are like that, that they don't mind playing that, that, that background until this man just out of nowhere have irreconcilable differences with his wife. And then the next thing you, and then he with her the next day. And then the woman like, Oh, well, I, well, you know, their marriage was already bad. You know, if, 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 if he's going to leave her for me, their marriage was already done. And be that as it may, your butt should have stayed out the way. Be that as it may, your butt should have stayed out the way. But that's what happens. And so it go both ways. And so just like with a man, if a man can call you a friend and have you giving him girlfriend energy, wife energy, but yet under the title of friend, if that will keep you being his do girl and being his emotional uh, dump bucket, where when he feeling whatever kind of way he can call and talk to you, you his therapist, you his life coach, you his uh, bank, you his chauffeur, you his nanny, you everything to him, but he just giving you the title of friend. If he can use you right there, and if that will keep you single, so be it. He's not finna tell you, let me remove myself from your life and, and the male masculine energy I'm bringing to your life so that you have room to receive your husband when he sees you. Let me get out of the way because I know as a man, there's no such thing as a man and woman being just friends. I know as a man that eventually it's going to be some feelings one way or the other, uh, unless somebody just totally into the opposite. I mean, totally into the same gender as them. And even then don't stop nothing because it's women who quote unquote like women still end up going back to a man or dealing with a man. It's men who say they like men and still be sleeping with women. So even that don't don't mean nothing. But so this but see, it's very rarely might be one time, might be ten times in the history of the world. That a man had told a woman, I'm going to remove myself from your life as your friend so that you have room to receive your husband. Because if your husband come in and he see me, it's going to be very hard for him to believe that we just platonic. And even if I meet him and shake his hand, it's going to take a special kind of man. And them kind of special men that's going to be okay with you having a male best friend, that's few and far in between. And that probably could keep you single longer than you want to be. So um, let me bag back. Stop calling me best friend like we cool or whatever, but don't 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 use that terminology when you're talking to a man because it's going to make him uneasy because I guarantee you he or somebody he know, a man he know that had a woman that had cheated on them with a so-called male best friend. So listen, don't do that because if we ain't meant to be together, you know what I mean? Don't I don't want you to block your blessings. There's probably 10 men in the history that have said that. And the reason why is because as humans... How, and, and at the same time, too, on the flip side now, what about women? How many women have said that? How many women have said, listen, I cannot be your best friend anymore because you have a girlfriend or because you're looking for your wife. And I, as a woman, would not be comfortable if I met a man and he had a woman that he calls best friend because I want to be my man's best friend. How many women have said that? How many women have said that? As humans, we look, we selfish in a lot of ways. And we, we look at what is this doing for my love bucket? What is this doing for my life? What is this? What am I getting from this? And when, if we getting something, we don't really think about other people. And that's what we have to, that's what we got to grow at. And that's what we got to force the issue. That's what we got to force the issue. You know, I have my dad's car right now. And um, it's an Italian car. You know, it's an Italian car. Um, a Maserati Gran Turismo. 
and it got probably got 450 horsepower in it and um my partner you know he uh, he's in family man you know different season of his life building his business and things like that i'm helping him build his business and helping him you know add some value to his company but he drives a, a honda civic right now and so you know it's a difference between the the horsepower and the maserati and the honda civic so we came home you know after the game him and his son he was with his little son i know how little boys love cars so i said hey man you know let me hold your car because i'm thinking about getting one of those for a family member which is the truth and you take this car and so when i had his car i had his car for like two days and i'm driving this car you know i'm driving a civic i drove to my basketball training two days in a row and but having that car i said you know what the car he got three kids so me having two boys i know what that's like the car looked like three kids you know it's in this car and they all athletes so i said let me take this to the car wash get it washed and get it vacuum that was a stretch for me that was a stretch for me that because i'm like i'm finna spend money to wash somebody else's car and i'm finna get sweaty vacuuming somebody else's car another man car that you know what i mean like i ain't got to do that he ain't asked me to do that he not expecting me to do that i said but let me do that so sure enough i do that but and it was a stretch for me and it, and it taught me a lesson and i'm sharing this lesson with you because it did something for me when he got a car he noticed it i was like man we don't even notice stuff sometimes sometimes i come in the house and i get I, to the room and my wife said did you notice how how um clean the living room was and i'm like uh no i ain't noticed that uh let, yeah let me go back in here and check this out oh wow this look good girl Woo, you did your thing but sometimes i just know men will notice stuff as soon as he got in the car he said hey man i want to he he sent me a voice memo and said hey i want to thank you for washing and vacuuming in the car you didn't have to do that you didn't have to do that man and you said you was taking your car in for service so i just assumed that if it's going in for service they're gonna wash it or whatever but if that's not the case i could shoot you some bread to, to get it washed and vacuumed as well and and i'm like no no man don't worry about that that ain't, ain't no issue like it's cool yeah it's supposed to go on for service so it ain't no issue but i said you know what i'm trying and this is why i'm sharing this with y'all and and he, he, you get the devil up uh, he's just bragging by himself he's just bragging oh my god that's a nice you're a narcy you're a narcy always bragging about yourself listen i'm sharing life experience and where i'm growing so that you could look at your life and say okay is this, have i already grown there too that's so understand that and say not rebuke you in the name of jesus get thee behind me cast out x dot rebuke you uh, uh olive oil put some of the hand sanitizer on you say uh there you go and so listen so when you look at this right here you got to look at your life and, and ask yourself where am i selfish at do I have a friend of the opposite that who has somebody or wants somebody and I'm not going to be with this person? Am I blocking their blessings by having my energy in their space, by having my presence? When I say energy, I mean presence. By being in their space, in their life, in this role. Because I know the average person know people and know how frisky we are how freaky we are how nasty humans is how humans quick to get in that bed quick to fall into fornication so i know that if i'm in this person life this woman life as her quote unquote best friend that any man she meet is going to feel a way and he don't know her he don't love her so he have no reason to give her the benefit of the doubt and he can easily assume and just because he assumes that me and her may have done something in the past may have kissed may have slept together or maybe every now and then getting a little tune up just because he assumes that i know as a man that that don't make him insecure that that doesn't make him jealous that that doesn't make him immature because that is human nature and it happens every day. 
So he would not be wrong to assume that because it's happening so much. And so if I'm genuinely this woman's friend, then I need to get out the way and not play the role of her maintenance man, fixing everything, her security blanket, her confidant, because she going to develop a type of love for me that she won't even have for her actual husband because I will be serving a role and doing things in her life that he, that she don't even allow him to do because I'm already filling the void. So she don't even need a husband for this or for this or for that because she like, oh, I got him for that. So as a man, if I'm not, if I'm a good man and I'm not being selfish, I'm going to remove myself. And because I understand, even though she may not understand. And then when she meet her husband, I'm going to get a card or a text message that say, hey, you know what? I want to thank you so much for being man enough to kind of take some steps back and not kind of play the role of dad or brother or boyfriend or husband. Because I was kind of subconsciously putting you in that role. And that was blocking my blessings. But when you stepped back and you moved out the way, it opened me all the way up. And I was able to see my husband for everything that he is and to receive him and fall in love with him and not have to worry about comparing him to, to my best friend, quote unquote best friend. And say, oh, you're not like John. Or you don't do this like John. You don't do that like John. She actually, this woman will actually be comparing and men too. Men will be comparing it go both ways because it's humans. It's humans. And men will be comparing his girlfriend to his his best friend. Oh, you don't cook? Oh, hey. It's good now, but hey, best, my, my best friend Lindsay. Ooh. Hey, I, I hate to say this now. Don't get jealous now because I know how y'all be. Y'all be jealous. Hey, don't get jealous now, but my best friend Lindsay. Ooh. Hey, I think she'll cook you under the table. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have to put I'm going to have to set up a cook-off between you and Lindsay. And see, he has a affection for Lindsay. He has a love for her that he's not even really conscious about. And now he got this amazing woman in his life, and he's comparing her to his friend. And don't even realize that it's making her upset because she's like, I can't feel this woman's shoes because... He done fell in love with her as a friend, which is a pure love that has nothing to do with the way he going to judge me romantically or as an intimate relationship. He going to be harder on me and judging me, but then giving her passes because she just the best friend. And then so now in his mind, she is a much better woman than me. You see what I'm saying? That's how it go. It go it go like that both ways. That's why I do not condone being friends. Cause see, the word friend. Colleagues, y'all go to work together. Hey, so what the TS report say today? Okay, cool. All right, gotcha. All right. Oh, see you later. Colleagues. All right. Classmates. Hey, classmate, good to see you. Okay, yeah. Hi, such such doing. Okay, girl. Tell your mama I say, hey, all right, uh -huh. gotta go. You see what I'm saying? I'm okay with colleagues. Classmates, you feel me? Y'all, y'all got to be at work together. Okay, cool. But all that extracurricular texting, hey, how you doing? Uh, what? No, nah. Mm -mm. Just know too much about humans. Just know too much about humans. The the trust of humans. Look, put your trust in God. And then it's always women in the comments, and sometimes it's men in the comments. I have a friend of twenty years, and there are absolutely no feelings whatsoever. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. Just because y'all ain't fell on your back, speak for yourself. You don't know what the other person is being tormented and tortured with every single night because the feelings they have for you and will never tell you. And it's ruining their relationships. It's blocking their blessings because you got you a friend, quote unquote friend. And listen, if y'all don't talk every week, if y'all don't confide in each other, if y'all not sharing hopes and dreams and fears and, and all of this right here, if y'all ain't sacrificing for each other, then y'all not friends. Y'all not friends. So stop saying, I got a friend of 20. That's not a friend. That's a colleague. That's an associate. That's not a friend. I'm talking about the literal 
sense of the word, the real meaning of the word. Friend, confidant. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your colleague or your associate of the opposite sex that you say happy birthday and Merry Christmas to. Tell your mom I said, hey, I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about that. See what I'm saying? So this is what you need to understand. That friend zone with somebody of the opposite and you heterosexual is never a good space to be in if you want you if you want to be married. Never good space to be in. Don't ever allow yourself to be in that space. So listen, it's women that I know. They clients. They clients. So if if I text them, it's about business. If they text me, it's about business. It's no, I'm texting no woman. Hey, how are you doing? How is life treating you? I miss you. Let's catch up. Let's talk about you know your hopes, your dreams. Everything is business. And that's how it got to be. Because if you go to talk about hopes and dreams and all of that right now, it's going to be some feelings developed. And in them feelings developed, then it's going to be some comparisons. Oh, yeah, it's going to be some comparisons now. It's going to be, oh, you know, oh, my wife don't do this. My wife don't do that. Or if you're a woman, oh, my husband don't do this. Or my boyfriend don't do this. Like, son, son. Yeah. It's different because one is called a friend and one is your partner. So the the, the chemistry, the relationship, the interaction is gonna be different. You can't that's you comparing apples to oranges. It ain't gonna be like that. It ain't gonna be that. You need to have friends of your same gender, and the friends that you have of your same gender, they need to be heterosexual. Because if you got a same gender friend who like your gender, then that friend could have feelings for you. Ah, uh, that is not true. No, that's humans. That's what's going to happen. That's what the brain do. It develops familiarity. It develops feelings, emotions, and affection for somebody or anything that you consistently talking to or around. So if, 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 I, if I have a friend, if, if I have a friend and he's a man and he like men, there is a 99% chance he gonna have end up having some kind of feeling. So listen, I'm not finna have that. Nor am I finna have a friend that is a woman who like men. I'm not finna have that. If they could be attracted to me, they not finna be my friend. You see what I'm saying? If they like men, they in a romantic way, they not finna be my friend. So who finna be my friend? Men who like women in a romantic way. I'm not discriminating or hating on the man who like men. You know what I'm saying? We, hey, what's going on, bro? Uh, all right, uh, how you doing? Everything good? All right, yeah. You and Tom doing good? All right, all right. Yeah, all right, I'm hollering. Not finna be my friend in all in my intimate personal space where I'm taking off my shirt and all that and he like the physique of a man. No, nor am I finna have a woman in that space. You got to use common sense. And a lot of times we try to be so politically correct. Oh, well, that is being like this. No, that's being safe. That's being wise. That's being wise because you understand human nature. That's all that is. You, I ain't, you ain't discriminating and hating and you ain't being arrogant and stuck up. No, you being wise and you setting up boundaries in place so that you don't have people right there next to you lusting after you and want to be with you actually when you trying to have a relationship that's what you got to understand but a lot of people we play that game we play that we play the fool and we when we just think it's all cool no nah humans are flawed and yeah you could get that point to be mature but that's a huge gamble and even if you at that point there's no way for you to know 100 percent that your friend is at that point because you don't live in your friend mind you don't live in your friend mind so you will be you know ignorant to believe that you know 100 percent that your friend has no attraction to you whatsoever you don't know that because you're not them and you don't know what people live with people got all kind of skeletons and and dark secrets that you don't know about that your best friend don't know about that your you don't know about your spouse dark secrets you know what i'm telling you listen to me now hey this is tony gas and god bless you we'll talk soon